We praise God for your liberality and the offering. We pray that God will restore back to you many fold. At this time, we're going to call uh, our own Sister Nancy Turner with our church announcements. Praise the Lord, everyone. As scripture is taken from Psalms 34 and 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. On our prayer list, we have the Smyrna Church family as a whole, the sick and shut in, Brother Sam Withers, Sister Katie Farish, Sister Latonga Slade, our nation as a whole. In bereavement, we ask that you remember the Mitchell Penix family in special prayer of the passing of their loved one, Sister Patricia Mitchell. She is the cousin of Sister Fowler, Deacon Turner, and Brother Vincent. Sister Patricia Mitchell's viewing is today from 1 to 8 p.m. at Johnson Funeral Home, and the funeral will be tomorrow, Monday, at 1 p.m. at Browns Chapel Church, and this is a graveside service. Happy birthday to the April Saints. We would like to wish Sister no Leader Miller the fifth. Let's give her a hand. Amen. Our very own Deacon Cecil Graves, the sixth. Sister Patricia Watkins, the seventh. Mother Myrtle Simmons, the eleventh. And Sister Katrina Penix, the twelfth. Brother Jameer Hopkins, the seventeenth. And Sister Vivian Lindsay, the twenty-second. Happy birthday, Saints. We would like to say congratulations to all our students on doing a great job this nine week for your school accomplishments. On this Saturday, there will be a yard sale from 8 a.m. to 12 noon at the former Smyrna Church on 1598, that's the old Smyrna Church building. And if you would like to uh, get a table, please see Sister Fowler, and that's this Saturday from 8 to 12. Please feel free to make a donation to our church fund ministry. Our cash app is dollar sign Smyrna Church 72. Our mailing address is Smyrna Church of Christ, 1025 Mesmer Church Road, Reedsville, North Carolina, 27320. If you would like to make a prayer request, please feel free to call 336-342-2217. And we would like to invite any and everyone to please feel free to come out and join us each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. in our parking lot. Tune your radio station to FM 87.9. Bathrooms are available inside the church. Use the front entrance. Our thought for the way. God is preparing us for something great. Get ready and hold on. Also, we would like to add to our bereavement list the Waverly, Neal, Penix family. Please bear these announcements in mind in Jesus' name. Deacon Turner has an additional announcement. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Lord. Can I have a horn? Please? Praise the Lord, everybody. As you know, this month is usually our anniversary for our pastor and this pandemic has stopped a lot of things, but Bishop has told me not to put no pressure on the saints. But I said, this is anniversary, and I'm going to give an anniversary. So we're going to ask all the saints that we'll give anything when you start bringing it for the month of April so we can bless our pastor because he haven't asked for anything. But we're asking everybody that will. Last night when I was laying there, God spoke to me and said, we got to take care of the land of God. Amen. Let's give a heart if you believe that. We got to take care of the man and woman of God. So I'm asking everybody that will, if you have something for the anniversary, you can see me. Because I, I have mine, my wife, my kids. And I want to be going to be, this whole month of April, we want to be taking care of our pastor. Uh, and I will turn everything in that y'all give to me to him. So we're going to ask everyone, if you're going to do something, just blow your horn if you want to do something for the anniversary. Give, give me a horn. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're not going to put no amount on you because Bishop said don't put no pressure on them. But anything you can do so we can bless the pastor and the woman of God at this time, okay? Thank you so much. May God bless you. Praise the Lord. We're going to have our praise team to come back for one selection. After this selection, we're going to turn it into the hands of our pastor. 
Bishop Thomas Fowler to bring the bread of life in Jesus' name. Bishop Thomas Fowler. Amen. And if you're thankful to have a man of God who loves God, who loves his service, amen, then I want you to honk those holy horns on those cars and thank God for this man of God, amen, who is here at the Smyrna Church of Christ and the apostolic faith. Amen. 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 Bishop Fowler. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Uh, for all the saints, you know, to the Spirit of Christ. My wife, 40 some years of marriage to Ella Robinson, Ella Simpson, Dr. Miller, Ella Miller, our chairman, Deacon, Deacon Turner, and his, and his companion. Dr. Miller, his companion, Ellen Simpson, his companion, we thank God. All the missionaries, saints, and friends, our mother, Mother Gray's founding mother, and church mother, Mother Carter, we give honor to you. Amen. And everyone in their prospective places, our music department, our media department, led by Brother Carter, we thank God for him. 
God has been good to our saints. Amen. He has been mighty good. There's many good things are happening. Also, we need people who will help with the Meals on Wheels. We started that. They're going to send us the application so we can uh, get saints busy once a month. Uh, Meals on Wheels, I think it's a great service. People can't get out, but you're not working, you're retired, they give you something to do. Just bring in the meals and put them at the door. Uh, they, they, the meals are uh, great meals, same meals they use at the Senior Center in Reedsville. So we thank God for that, uh, that we will be working with that. And we need saints that will volunteer. Don't mind working for the kingdom. It's more than just being at church working, but we need to work in the community as well. Amen? We're going to move on. It's not, I'm not going to be with you very, it's very long. We started, uh, my wife and I started carrying food to some of the saints. We're going to try to do more and more of that until we get started. But we got to get involved. Everybody needs to be involved in kingdom work. Find something you have a passion for and do it. Whatever that is. Because God honors your service. It's more than just beyond these four walls. But we are here to serve humanity. Now yeah, that <clears throat> John twenty. John twenty. John twenty. Uh where, where did my wife go? She she uh we we started uh, doing this on Wednesday night. She's the reader for our Zoom. So come on over, Miss Sherry. Amen. You don't Amen. have to look for it. I got it right here. And Amen. We thank God for her. She has been in church since a young young lady. Since she was very, very young. Uh, being with her father, the late Apostle Graves, and serving under him, doing all the administrative work until he passed the good of the Lord, and could she continue to make sure the church run properly, the, the business end of it, the all the legal things he has to do to make sure we are uh, doing the right things. And it's a lot of work in ministry, saints. It's a lot of work. John 20, start at verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, We have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. Then comes Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and see if the, the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, were wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and saved two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. So, we listen to the story here. This chapter appears to uh, Jesus and his followers. And the Bible says his own followers. Now, the parents uh, to Mary Magdalene in verse 1 and 18. 
and two, the parents to the ten disciples in verse 19-23. And three, the parents to Thomas, verse 24 and 29. And the God of this world is Satan. I said the God of this world is Satan. And, and he has blinded, saints, so many and prevented them in their belief. So you see what's happening now. Satan is on a world stage. It's not just happening in, in America. It's happening all around the world. Uprising. They have a trial in, I think it's Milwaukee, when this officer uh, allegedly had he kept his knee on his man's neck, and he died. And was, and was not allowed to let anyone help this dying man. Now, you used to see things like that. It was only kept quiet or undercover. But now the world is looking at this nation. And the question is, how can you say that we are not sensitive to human lives when we see what is happening in your world. See, the devil has no limitations on what he will do. He has no heart, he has no compassion, and he has no love. Satan is loose. The Bible says Satan will be loose for a little season. And he is on full alert. Everything he's up to, he's blinded folks' eyes. And he prevented them from believing in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Now Jesus therefore appealed exclusively to his own in order to confirm their faith in a living God. See, so he had told them about his resurrection. He had told them about his death. He had already instructed him what the end was going to be. And Peter rebuked him, said, Lord, not, not you, Lord, not so, Lord. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Right. Amen. See, the devil want you to think everything is all right. Oh, With all this stuff, it's just normal. What you see is happened before. So all these things that you're seeing now, Satan is behind it. Oh, yeah. Satan is in the midst of it. Such as we uh, uh, profound that they transformed the disciples from a cowardly man hiding in fear mm. to bold witnesses in Jesus' day in Peter 18, 27. So people are fearful now because of all they see that Satan is up to. Gun sales are going up. Mm. Ammunitions are buying out. The, the, they're supposed to be the most powerful nation in the world, and we're living in what? Fear. Mm -hmm. We're living in fear. We have forgotten about the God that kept you when you didn't have a weapon. Come on. You forget about the God that kept you when you didn't have any way to protect yourself. Slapping home with the doors while unlocked. Come on. Y'all remember those days when you didn't, yeah. didn't have to lock your doors? You feel neighbors looked out for neighbors? Amen. No, you don't know who your neighbor is. Oh, right. My neighbor moved in a few years ago. I see him in the yard. They speak, I speak. If they don't speak, I don't speak. Mm. They don't visit, I don't visit. We don't know our neighbors, but it used to be you knew your neighbors. Right. And you could trust your neighbor. Right. You could leave your children with your neighbor, but you better not do it now. You got to be careful who you leave your children with. You can't even leave with kin folks. A lot of times, bad things happen. This is the world we are living in. Satan is loose. And Jesus spoke about it. Once again, John, purpose in recording these resurrection appearances was to demonstrate that Jesus physically and bodily resurrection was the crowning proof that he truly is the Messiah. 
the Son of God, who laid down his life for his own. Verse 1 to 10, several other women were present on the first visit, Matthew 28, 1 and 8. Mark 16, 1 and 8, and Luke in 24, 1 and 12. His clothes lay in the only fashion. Had his own body been stolen, the grave clothes would have not been left. So the lives did not stand. Lives will never stand. The lives will catch you. They got so many today. Politicians have lied and got to key positions, and now they're just trying to find a way out of the lies they've told over the years. But your lies will catch up with your saints. Amen. Amen. Your lies will catch you. John 20 and 1 said, First day of the week came Mary Magdalene, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeing the stones taken away from the sepulchre. Now he talked about the first day of the week refers to Sunday. From then on, believers set aside Sunday to meet with and remember the marvelous resurrection of our Lord. According to Acts 27, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 16 and 2, it become known as the last day in Revelation 1 and 10. So when folks try to say the last day is Saturday, they're all confused. We're not living under those laws. We're living under the grace of God. We're living on the other side of the cross. God says no respect them a day. He's no respect the person. Jew and Gentile is no difference. We're not living according to the Dominican law. We're living on the body of Christ, on the blood of the Lamb of God. Yeah. Come up Mary early when it was yet dark. Perhaps the reason why Jesus first appeared to Mary Magdalene was to discriminate, to discriminate his grace by his personality, loving faithfulness to someone who formerly was a, a, a bad person in her past. So God would take the, the foolish things of this world to confine the wise. Why would he use a, a, a woman of such low character, so of his low esteem? He said, I didn't come for the high, but I came to the lowly. Yeah. Those of no reputation. But clearly also became because she loved him so dearly and deeply that she appeared before anyone was at the tomb. Her purpose in coming was to finish the preparation of Jesus' body for burial by bringing spice and more spice to anoint him, his body, in Luke 24 and 1. She had already, they had already put the spice when he was alive. They took the best and put it on his feet. And they said, why are you going to pour all that money out? Waste it on his feet. She didn't know there was prophecy in the making. A lot of times God does something in our lives. It's prophecy in the making. It's always prophecy in the making when it comes to the child of God. Somebody give God a praise. I'm living in my purpose, saints. I'm living in my promises right now. No, they know from a child. How God was going to plan my life. Hallelujah. Didn't know what was going to happen uh, to me as a person. But I remember looking up on Saturdays and just talking to the Lord, just a young boy. But just talking to the Lord about his goodness and his mercy. And thanking God for all that he had done. Just a child, but I had enough God in me, not knowing what I was doing, but God had already put in my spirit. And when I was just a kid, what was going to happen in my latter years? And I come and tell you, I remember those times when I could talk to him in my secret place outside, like I am today. I can talk to him, and, and don't worry about having an amplifier, a mic, or a choir, or music. I can talk to my Savior. I can make music in my heart. Somebody give God a praise. You can make music in your heart when you know Jesus. This was very first time she had came, she could leave home from 6 p.m. Friday to 6 p.m. Saturday. That was a Jewish Sabbath day. And she could not go anywhere on the Sabbath. Mary Magdalene 
there's the Mary that Jesus cast said she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said unto them they have, they were, and, and here to the other disciples whom Jesus loved this is the author John that Jesus had predicted his resurrection numerous times it was more than they could believe at this point it would take He's showing himself alive to them by many convincing proof in Acts 1 and 3 for them to believe. So they didn't believe nothing that he had said during his earthly ministry. They did not believe anything because Peter even cursed and swore that he was not one of them. So he knew what they were going to do. The other disciples mentioned here in John. Mary Magdalene was astonished that the huge stone had, rolled, had been rolled away. She perhaps thought that the Roman soldiers or the Jewish leaders had taken the body away. John and Peter was undoubtedly very close friends along with James. These three many times had gone outside privately with Jesus. John 23, Peter therefore went forth and, and that other disciples came into the sepulchre. And, and the excitement of the women arose and aroused Peter and John and, and they ran to the sepulchre to see what was going down. Look at his neighbor and said, they want to see what was going down. You know how there was something happening in the community and, and maybe some shooting or some fighting. You've been running to see who got shot or what was going on. You want, you want to see what was going on. And our community had a place called the Flat Tops. And that's where the rough folks live. And we would always look through the bushes trying to see what was going on at the flat tops. We wanted to see who got cut this week, who got shot this week, who got beat up this week. We would look boy and peeping through the bus, bushes trying to see what was going on. My dad used to say, you better get out of there. You might catch a straight bullet, something might happen. But we was excited about it, to see what was going to happen in the flat top. Somebody said, in the flat tops, to see what was going down. But it was in the flat tops, it was a sepulchre that was going down. And when it got there, the sepulchre, it had already went down. The body was not there. Somebody said, it was not there. My God and my Savior had risen. We know that John was younger than Peter. That the couple would, with excitement, cause him to get there quickly. Then the other person, which is called Disciple Peter. In 25 and 7, we see the linen cloth lying. A contact exists between the resurrection of Lazarus, 11 and 44, and that that of Jesus. While Lazarus came forth from the grave, wearing his grave clothes, Jesus left his. Jesus didn't take anything. Jesus said, everything I'm leaving here, I don't need it anymore. Lazarus needed his to cover his body. But Jesus, I'm rising with a brand new body. I got a brand new outfit on. I got a robe that fit me well. I got the robe that I can put on. It's a heavenly robe. Somebody to give God a praise. I don't need this garment no more. I can take it off. Let me take it off. I don't need this anymore, Dallas. I can take it off. And that's what he took off. Take off the cross. But see, he says, I think, take it off the cross. I don't need it anymore. Jesus, I don't need the cross anymore. I come off the cross. The cross is a symbol that I was there. And the cross is a symbol that I was there. It's all these symbols. Recognize the fact, saints, that we don't need the cross around our neck. We don't need a robe on our back. We need the Holy Ghost in our lives. That's all we need. So Jesus didn't have the word, but he took it off. He laid it aside. He said, I don't need the cross anymore. I don't need the cross anymore. I don't need Calvary anymore. I don't need the robe anymore. Because what I got is heavenly. And I'm on my way back to glory. And if you live right, saints of God, 
You can take off the veil from the world. You can take off your sins. You can take off the things that happen in your life. You can cast them aside. The cross represents sin and shame. The cross represents hatred and bigotry. The cross meant mean everything that was bad. The crucifixion came to the new one. And there's great people in Babylon that created a cross as a suffering symbol. Anything was bad. The man, the man factor the thieves of robbers was hung on an old rugged cross. So you don't need it anymore. Jesus gave you a brand new robe. Hallelujah. And it fit me well. He left the Holy Ghost. He said, put on me by way of baptism. And then what he said, he didn't say put on a robe. He didn't say put on a cross. He said, put on me and water of baptism. When I went down in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody give God a praise. I got it. I got it. I got it like the Bible says. He took it off. Took it off. Laid it aside. Like it become known in the Lord's day of Revelation 1 and 10. Come at Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark. Perhaps the reason why Jesus first appeared to Mary Magdalene was to demonstrate his grace by his personality. Loving faithfulness to someone who formerly had a bad past. But clearly, also because she loved him so dearly and deeply that she appeared before anyone got at the tomb. A purpose. So saints, you got to have a purpose in God. She had a purpose to come and was coming to finish the preparation of Jesus' body for burial by bringing more spices to the Lord's body. Luke 24 and 1. Say, what is your purpose today? I would you ask yourself that question. What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is the reason that you're saved? What is the reason you want to be saved? I thank God now, people might get angry at me. I thank God that the book selling in churches and tapes and all kinds of stuff that you can't pre preachers come, they want to sell books and tapes and now that's over. Make my house a house of prayer for all people, not dead and robbers and thieves. We stop selling dinners, we stop selling stuff and start giving stuff away. I told the saints, we're not selling anything else. If people want to donate something, fine. I know you have different programs and stuff, but you should always got something to sell. You should be able to bless others. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God is looking for people that are real. God is looking for people that are holy. I want people to get back to really loving God. Loving with a purpose. Not with a deceitful, conniving way to get rich off people. But loving folk for who they are. The other disciples mentioned here in John. Mary Magdalene was astonished that the huge stone had been rolled away. She understood it. She didn't understand, but she saw it. She thought maybe the Romans or the Jews had pushed it and got it away. Now, Peter and John was undoubtedly very close. They were close friends. And, and, and they was excited. Everybody was excited about what was about to happen. And they, they, they didn't know what, what, what was happening, but they knew something had taken place. The linen cloth, the napkin, the state of those things indicated no struggle, no inherent wrapping of the 
by the, by the grave robbers who would wrap, unwrap the body anyway since uh, transporting it elsewhere would be easier and more pleasant if it was left in its wrap and spiritual condition. So they had great robbers back then and, and they thought maybe that this had happened in this case. But the grave robbers back then, they didn't take no time to unwrap nothing. They took everything with them, the body and all. And they would take whatever they, a lot of times they, they were there as a moment, uh, momentized, they were wrapped in mummies and, and they might have had gold or rings and left on that particular body and they was looking for riches or whatever they had. So in this case, it was nothing left but the clothing. All appearances indicate that no one had taken the body, but it had been moved through the, the cloth and left it behind in the tomb. John 25 said he stooped down and looked in, saw the linen cloth lying, yet went he not in. Now perhaps John was too frightened to go in until Peter got their soul, they would go in together. John took a peek in, but saw nothing except the cloth of linen, which had been Jesus. John 20, 67, it came Simon Peter, 6 through 7 rather, then Simon Peter followed him and went in into the sepulchre, seeing the linen cloth lie and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Peter took time to look around and quickly recognized these were things that John had been wearing, that Jesus rather, had been wearing when he was placed in the sepulchre. That verse 20 and 8 said, Then went in also the disciples, which came first to the sepulchre, and saw and believed. Believe was yet they did not. They believed Jesus was alive, not knowing the details of his resurrection. John saw the grave clothes, was con convinced by them that, they, that he had risen. John had been frightened, being so young, but when Peter went in, he felt safe and going in also. When John saw this, he believed. He believed, Mary, that Jesus was no longer here. 29 says, for as they knew not the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Now he had taught them about three and a half years. And the Bible says here, they knew not the scriptures. So everybody sitting in your congregation don't get it. Look at your neighbors and they don't get it. They don't get it. Sit there for years and don't get it. 40 years in church, but they don't get it. Now, neither Peter nor John understood that scriptures that Jesus would rise. And Psalm 16 and 10. This is evidenced by a report of Luke 24 and 25. Jesus had foretold of his resurrection 2 and 19. Matthew 16, 21. Mark 8, 31. So all these scriptures, Luke 9, 22. But they were not accepted in Matthew 16, 22. By the time John wrote this gospel, the church had developed an understanding of Old Testament prediction of the Messiah's resurrection as yet. Why? They did not know. It's not explained. Jesus had told them over and over while he was with them. But somehow, look at his name, said, but somehow. Somehow. Glory to God. It had not soaked into their thinking that on the third day he would rise again. Lazarus rose from the grave. 
They saw that, but yet still, they did not believe. Then the disciples went away unto the home. Sure, they were taking, I'm sorry, sure they were thinking that something unusual had happened here, but they had not been able to figure out what had happened. Saints, if you're not spiritual, you will <laughs> never understand spiritual things. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. They had no revelation. They had no spiritual guidance. So that's why you can go to college, you can go get education, you can go to seminary, you can get, you can get a DD, uh, a, a doctor, ministry, whatever. But if you don't have the spirit, you'll never understand God. The spirit will bring light. These birds didn't have their knowledge of the word because they didn't have his spirit. In verse 20, 11, 3, weak Mary's sense of grief and loss may have driven back to the tomb. She apparently had not crossed paths with Peter and John and does not know of Jesus' resurrection. This was Mary's second visit to the tomb. John 20, 11 said, but Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. Now even Jesus' body had been according to Mary. Her thoughts must have been that they have taken all the contact with their Savior away and she knew something was wrong. She was very sad about what had taken place. But in her mind she knew that his body would be still there. So she didn't know either that he had risen. Because she didn't know she would never try to go to bring spices and redo his body. But the two angels was in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body had laid. Two angels, Luke 24 and 4, describes both. Matthew 28 and 2, report only one. John reason for the, the mention of the angels to demonstrate that no grave robber took the body. This was an operation of the power of God and God alone. Don't give the devil no credit. It is God that yes, does sir. it and God alone. God is the only one that can save you and God alone. Somebody give God a whole praise. God the only one can save you. And God alone. God alone is the only one can deliver you. God and God alone. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God a praise. Yeah. Your, your, your mama can't save you. Your father can't save you. Your pastor can't save you. Nobody can save you but God and God alone. He gives you words. He gives us words to tell you, but it's going to be you and God alone. You got to ask God to, Lord, help me. Give me understanding of what the preacher is telling me. God, hold my spiritual ear that I can hear from you. You and you alone can change my situation. You and you alone can change my heart. You and you alone can change my marriage. You and you alone can change my children. You and you alone can change my job situation. You, Lord, and you alone can fix my mental problem, my drug addiction, my habits that I cannot break. You and you alone, Lord, can do it. Whatever addiction you may have right now, Jesus and Jesus alone can change your life. Many times I try to change my situation. I try to make things better. I thought I could fix it. I tried, I tried to fix me. I couldn't fix me. And people tell me they trying to fix somebody else. You can't fix yourself. Let's lay on your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, 
or your girlfriend. You can't fix them up. If I can get hold of them, I can bring them to church. I can fix them. I can make them a better man. I can make them a better woman. You can't fix yourself. If God don't fix it, it won't be fixed. Paul, I used to hear him, Deacon Perkins, and Charles Perkins just sing a song. If Jesus don't fix it, nobody can. It's him. It's him alone. It's him and him alone. As my wife come, I know today somebody's saying, Pastor, you don't know what I'm dealing with. You don't know my upbringing. You don't know my family life. Come on, baby. Come on. You don't know how my daddy and my mother, you don't know how my life has been torn apart through divorce and separation. You don't know, Pastor, what I've been through. But I come to tell you, Jesus knows. He can change your that situation. Yeah. He can change whatever you're going through right now. If you just step out of your car and you be bold enough and say, Lord, yes, I need you. I'm saved, but I still need you. Yeah. I need an amen, Lord. Step out your cars right now. Just step out on the ground. Yeah. Just step out right now. Be bold. Just step out and say, Lord, here I am. I'm willing to step forward. I'm willing to let you know that I need you in my life. I'm doing pretty good, but I need a God. I got things in order, but I need a God. I need a Savior. I need a, a go-between, a paraclete. I need the Holy Ghost. And I know right now somebody's standing here. Somebody needs to be at your car. But I come and change. If you don't want to deliver, you stay where you are. Because if you don't want me, he said, don't hinder me. Because I want to bless somebody. I want to give you a new direction in life. I want to give you a new purpose in life. I want to give you new hope in life. Somebody need new hopes, new purpose, new purpose, new desire. I want to go sing Jesus, Jesus. Sing it right now. In the center of my joy. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Mm. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Let the Lord touch 
Thank God for invitation. Thank God for accepting him as Savior and Lord. 